In classical mechanics, we can directly measure any quantity like position, momentum, energy, angular momentum, and so on. What you need to do is to define a coordinate system, find a position of the particle in this system, and calculate other observables like momentum. For example, to calculate the momentum, what we need to do is to take the time derivative of the position and multiply it by its mass. And there we are. In quantum mechanics, it's not that simple to easily find a position in a coordinate system. Actually, we can directly observe the system and perform our measurements. That's why we use a mathematical entity called the wave function, which contains all the information we need to talk about our quantum system. This wave function is governed by a famous equation called the Schrodinger equation and lives in a space called Hilbert space. In this space, we can also define some Hermitian operators that act on our wave functions. The act of measurement causes the wave function to collapse and for some identically prepared systems, the result is different. But there are some functions for which the operator always yields the same value. These values are called eigenvalues and the functions are called eigenfunctions. The set of all possible eigenvalues for our Hermitian operator is called its spectrum, which can be discrete or continuous. The interesting thing is that we can write the wave function of the particle as a linear combination of these eigenvectors. Mathematically speaking, the eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator have three important properties. First, their eigenvalues are real, and here's the proof. Second, eigenfunctions associated with these eigenvalues are orthonormal, which can be proved like this. And finally, these eigenfunctions are complete and we can write any function in Hilbert space as a linear combination of them. As an example, suppose that we want to find different energies that a quantum system can be in. What we need to do is to calculate this equation, this eigenvalue equation, and find the possible eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Now, if we have a state psi and want to calculate the energy of the system, we can write psi as a linear combination of energy operator eigenvectors and the coefficients show the probability that psi is in that specific energy. In the next video, I'll talk about the statistical interpretation of this framework. But for now, all we need to know is that observables in quantum mechanics are Hermitian operators with real eigenvalues and their eigenvectors are orthonormal and complete.